be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to another episode of Rabbit Trails, along with myself and my good friend, Max Massiano. Max, how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm actually uh, on location uh, in sunny Florida. How cool is that? Man, yeah. oh, man. And what a great breezy, no humidity. That's great. What a great day for it. You know, I'm excited. Today is the first day of daylight savings, and it's my time of year. I mm-hmm. love it because uh, when I get up in the morning, it'll be daylight. And when I go, to, when I get home at night, it'll be daylight. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the sun. So uh, yes. this is my time of the year. Now, I see lots of people posting on social saying, Oh, I hate it. Why don't we just keep it the regular way? <clears throat> well, that's uh, that's your opinion. <laughs> yeah. I need to have sunshine. But um, really good to see that. And you're in Florida. Hey, how is it in the free state of Florida, dude? It's like the Wild West, man. Every, it's like <laughs> nothing ever happened. It is crazy. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I know I spoke to you yesterday and you said the airport was jamming and People were getting off the plane, ripping the mask off their face. and Yeah. Spring yeah, break. It's, it's amazing. And they're loaded up for spring break, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Which, of course, I'm avoiding. I'm just hanging out at my mom's. I, I think that's a smart idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was really funny. You said, I'm well protected in a gated community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so nobody's going to come in. and infect I got my, my golf visor on. What? That's, you know, it's like in, in extra Florida. Florida. That's the hat you got to have, man. And, and, uh, and possibly you'll see me driving around the neighborhood in the yeah. golf cart later. <laughs> so I'm in the woods by myself today, I guess. But, but yeah. uh, it's all good. It's all good. Well, my friend, another week has passed. Mm-mm-mm. It has been an interesting week on social media. Um, I've actually been waiting a few days to, to get on the show and, uh, <laughs> and uh, just- vent. And Let, then, letting the the rage factor cool down. You oh know, man! Like you know what? I, I love this business, and I love my fellow salon professionals. But I'm going to tell you: sometimes we do stuff that's just it's just not right. Yeah. And um, and so today, I mean, I want to talk about something that happened over the last few days. I got I got kind of tagged into. And uh, I chose not to play because I did not want to offend some people. Sure. So, um, I thought the best place for me to express my feelings would be on our own show. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Safe space. Yeah, safe space. So, uh, you know, I always get in a day with questions, and. Um, and this weekend, uh, this week, there was a post uh, on social media by a um, pretty well-known educator. Mm-hmm. And um, I got tagged into that because someone wanted to know what I thought. And, you know, it's, sometimes we end up arguing over the craziest stuff. I mean, I, I laugh when people <laughs> argue over the color wheel. And you, people still do that, man. Mm-hmm. You, you can see them on social media. <laughs> well, I believe this and I believe that. It's the color wheel. It doesn't belong to any of us. <laughs> it's, right. a, it's a principle of science. Um, so uh, let's start off today. and uh, Let's start with our waiver, first of all. If it's the first time you're watching Rabbit Trail... Uh, let me kind of give you an overview of the purpose of this program. First of all, most importantly, it's about being able to laugh at ourselves. Uh, it's also being able to um, be accountable for some of the stuff that we say. If you're an educator and um, sometimes you say things, maybe not purposely, maybe you just don't articulate it the right way and someone gets a different message from you. You know, we have to be concerned about that. I always try to be concerned about how I articulate my message because sometimes I can get pretty crazy, you know, and I have to stop and go. I as because I watch people, I see the glazed eyes and the glazed mm-hmm. looks in their eyes. And I go, you know, are you with me? Do you do you are, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
I, I think I told you that story, Max, didn't I? When I was teaching at the Redken Exchange in New York and I had a, a mentee, um, Deb Rosenberg is her name. Uh, she still works for L'Oreal, uh, but Deb was my mentee. It was her first time working at Redken. And when we did a class together and it was uh, Don't Sweat It, Fix It, which was a color correction program I wrote for them. Mm -hmm. So we were doing that program and I was up on stage, you know, <clears throat> explaining the way I explain about, you know, the scientific things about color. And then Deb would come up at the corner of the stage. She goes, what he's saying is, yeah. and then I would say something else. And then she'd come up to the corner of the stage and she'd say, what he's saying is, so in debrief that night, I'm sitting there. I looked at her. I said, you know, today was kind of like you were trying to translate for me. And she goes, I was. She says, many people in that room didn't have any idea what you yeah. were talking about. And I went, no, they knew what I was talking about. I stopped and asked them, you guys understand? And they all went, yes. She goes, no, Dennis, they didn't understand. So the next day, because, you know, I wanted to prove her wrong. First thing I did, so I want to ask you guys a question. Last night in debrief, um, they told me that you didn't understand half the things I was saying yesterday. Now, you guys understood what I was saying yesterday, right? And they just looked at me blank stares. And finally, mm -hmm. one of them raised his hand. He says, Dennis, dude, you were like Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. And we were just hanging on for dear life. We had no idea where you were going. But we weren't going to tell you we didn't understand. The, the chemistry and, riff. Yeah. And at that very moment, it was a very humbling moment for me, right? Because I expect them to go, yeah, I get it. But I realize people don't always get it, not necessarily because they don't understand it, because you didn't articulate it in a way that they could understand. Sure. So um, the purpose of this show is to, to hopefully cover some of this information that really is kind of funny when you think about it, the stuff we say yeah. that we may not mean. And it's also to discover some of the stuff that we just simply don't know. And, and when I've always felt that once I learn what I don't know, then I have moved forward. Right. I haven't moved backwards. I've moved forward because I've actually now I know something I didn't know before. Right. right. So that's the purpose of this show. And it's not to be condescending. It's not to be contradicting some of your belief systems. Although for some of you, we will do that. I promise you. Um, but it's basically just to kind of bring up some things that happen because we are also connected today. Social media has changed everything in society, but it's changed everything in, in cosmetology as well, yeah. because now on social media, millions of us are connected and we're not connected with everyone. We're connected our own little circle. So it's like millions of these little spheres, worlds of hairdressers that are interconnected. And there's, there's thousands of experts. Uh, there's thousands of self-professed experts. There's thousands of experts who, if you don't think they're an expert, they tell you they're an expert, right? By reciting their credentials. And so we still, a lot of it is opinion. Right. And so we're trying to, you know, filter through some of this stuff and kind of give you our spin on it, which is to the people who follow us. And hopefully somebody who may be watching us for the first time will go, OK, those guys make sense, you know, because we try to be as truthful, as honest as we possibly can. Everything we share with you, we base it on science and on fact. And sometimes the truth doesn't taste good. <laughs> sometimes the truth Ew. the truth is like vinegar so um today uh hopefully you'll have a good time with us we're going to have a good time we have that's why we set this up so it's very casual um and the reason we call it rabbit trails is because sometimes we get the off down a rabbit trail so you know just hang on with us and uh i think at the end of the program you will walk away with some uh knowledge bones as Max calls them. Yes. <laughs> so if you've got a notepad, you might want to take some notes. And um, you may want to watch this more than once because you might miss something during the whole or the whole con the whole program as we move through. I find when I go back and watch a program, I pick up little things all along the way. All right. So we've got the waiver out of the way. Here we go, Max. 
All right. All right. So here's what I want to do. First of all, I want to show you the picture that was posted. And this is the actual picture that was posted. And so I'm going to pop it up on the screen here. All right. So Max, you can see here that this was a color service or, or they were removed color from a section of the hair. And their target is to try and take this person back to what the color of the hair is, that natural, what they call natural. Right. The darker section. And so as you can see, this is a pre-lightened section of hair. Um, but as you said last night, as I showed this to you, you said, what? It's a very poorly, <laughs> very poorly lightened section of hair. Yes? Yeah. Well, gotcha. and, and first off, all right, like, was this supposed to be a strand test, <laughs> you know? And, and why did whoever did it put it right on the top of the head? <laughs> like, why not do like one on the underneath? Yes. You know? Yeah, this wasn't a strand test. This was a strand test. That was, it was like, <laughs> it looks like a big back to back. Oh, yeah. Spliced strand test. Absolutely. Well, we know she lightened or whoever it was, they lightened over previously tinted hair because you can mm -hmm. see that the hair comes up uneven. And that's yeah. one of the characteristics when you're trying to lighten pre previously tinted hair is that it's never going to lighten evenly. Yeah. And the reason is because that hair has had a lot of color treatments, more than likely. And so there's areas that are more porous than other areas. So some areas are going to give up color yeah. a lot easier than others. So what I did is I put some circles around these and we'll address these circles as we go through it. This one up here at the top with the yellow ring around it, you can see that it's pretty light. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a variation of, of opinions about whether that's a level eight or a level nine. I think it's a mixed bag. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then down in the orange section or the golden section here, it drops into a stronger gold, almost a red gold in some of these areas. Mm -hmm. And then down here, it's like, it looks like they were trying to remove or there was some previous <coughs> direct dyes on this head. I mean, this looks like direct dyes that are, they've tried to lighten out of the hair or um, this has been stained. This hair doesn't look like it has a lot of integrity in the lower section. Right. And so I would say probably there's not much cuticle left. And so they probably stained some of the cortex and that's why it looks like an open wound. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah it's, you, it's looking like it's in pretty rough shape on the, yeah. that last third. Ab absolutely. All right, so, so this was the picture that they were referencing in the post. Right. Okay, and so I'm now going to read you what the person posted, the text. It said, I saw this photo on a hairstylist page, the girl asked if she should fill this hair before bringing her back to natural. There was at least 70 comments. 99% of the responses said yes, then gave her the worst advice I'd ever seen. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, if you have to ask the question, you shouldn't be doing hair color, in my opinion. The need for filling is almost extinct. That is old school hair color, especially if you have a good line of product. There are basic rules of hair color and going darker. Answer, there's enough warmth in this hair that it does not need to be separately filled. And even if it was a bit lighter, a separate fill service application is hardly ever required if we are being taught modern day hair color. I am horrified over the knowledge of hair color I see on these hairstylist pages. Now, that was the leader of that group. So <clears throat> then I get pulled into it. <laughs> Someone says, I want your opinion. I said, no, I choose not to give you my opinion. I'm not going to play. It looks like quicksand to me. Right. There's no way it's not a win-win situation. Plead the fifth, plead the yes. fifth. So I stayed away. 
but that post got over 215 comments. And it's still well, running strong. It I, is. I've been checking yes. it every couple yeah. of days. And one of the most important comments that I saw there was first from the people who are on that page because they're following that group saying, whoa, why are you reprimanding this hairstylist? Sounds to me like you're being very condescending. Right. And of course, the response was, well, I'm not being condescending. I'm just being brutally honest. And and all of those kinds of things. So, th right. so there was a back and forth, a back and forth, a back and forth. So there were people who got their feelings hurt and they were, you know, they were upset. There were people who tried to support the reason. Um, many of them said, yes, filling is old school. It's, um, you know, we don't do filling the hair anymore. And uh, comments like, you don't need to fill the hair today because if you have a fully pigmented hair color line, um, filling is not necessary. So I was puzzled by this because, you know, I, I always have respect for all the other people that are training and doing education in this business. I, I try to, to show them the most respect, but I also am concerned as a trainer about the kind of information that we share, because here's what I know. And I had to learn this the hard way is that <clears throat> as a trainer, you have to be careful and how you express your feelings. Because, and today especially, we live in a society today where the slightest thing you say could cause someone to be offended. Right. So you have to be totally cautious about what, about what you're saying. And, you know, I look back at that statement and I thought about, well, this person could have said it this way, they could have said it that way, they could have made it softer. You know, and, and I think that that's the thing we need to do as educators. And, and I, I hate that word. I, I rather call myself a trainer or a facilitator mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, Tom Peters is a great author and he writes great, great books. Yes. Uh, and he says that no one wants, no one can educate anyone. You know, they have to want to learn. And in fact, Einstein said that he said, I don't, teach my students I create an environment where they want to learn yeah and, and I think that's what we have to do create that environment so the one thing that I want to address is this <laughs> is the old school thing and the fact that I chose not to comment um, because they wanted to say what does science say and right. so here's what science says it, this is not me it's what science says if you paint an uneven canvas, you may get an uneven result. So when I looked at that hair, I don't look at it as filling. Uh, see, to me, filling is really, that's a term that we used years ago. And it really doesn't describe what we're actually doing. We're really pigmentizing the hair. Mm -hmm. So when you pigmentize the hair, sometimes you pigmentize it if you're taking it from a light shade to a dark shade. <clears throat> sometimes you pigmentize it if the strand is uneven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you pigmentize it if you need just a little bit more of one pigment or another in order to create a, a canvas that will give you the end result that you're looking for. I'll give you an, an example. If I'm going from a level 10 lightened head of hair, that's pale yellow. And I am taking that client to a level five. We know that that's like five levels difference. Right. Could I put a level five on that level 10? Yes, I could. Absolutely. Would it be an even level five? I'm not sure. I've, I have a feeling it would look lighter than the level five. Um, would it last? I'm not sure of that either because that hair was excessively porous. I'm not sure it would have a lot of longevity. So when I looked at that strand of hair, I didn't, I don't think about filling. I think about, is it even? And it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, that's like the first, that's like the first thing you see. And right. it's kind of like, you know, just in your face. Right. So, so it's about pigmentizing, but it's still, 
a fundamental of understanding hair color. If you don't understand, or if you've never been exposed to or taught the rules for filling the hair, that's the, what we've called it for years. It's still mm -hmm. what they call it in beauty school. Then that will cause you challenges down the line when you are trying to create a desired result in hair color. Not always, but often it will. See, right. I find I use the pigmentizing concept all of the time. I, I mean, look, I'm in California, yeah. right? Where you are right now, it's the same problem. The client gets her hair colored. She goes out, she hits the golf course wearing one of those hats that you have on right now. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really protect you from anything. It doesn't protect you. By the you way, well. guys, look, there's, there's a hole in the top. <laughs> right. <laughs> So she leaves you a redhead. She comes back a blonde. Right. Well, if I'm doing her retouch, I'm going to have to address her retouch with the formula that I use normally based on what the color, what the hair is. And then the mid links and the ends is going to be a different color. Yeah. <clears throat> so in order to make it even, I'm going to have to add something to that in order to give me an even tonality all the way out through the ends of the hair. Right. And something that will survive her abuse. Yeah. So I'm going to use the rules of pigmentizing or the rules of filling for the hair. So it, it kills me when people say old school, you know? Yeah. It, it was taught years ago. It's old school, you know? So is the color wheel. It's old school. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. So don't be slapping that old school label on. All right. Because, you know, you try to, you know, and it's not ancient. And when you say, they say, well, nobody has to fill hair anymore. I disagree with you 100%. If you're not, you have to, there are many occasions in a day in the salon where you may have to pigmentize that hair. Right. Well, and, and like, just to take it one step further, you know, there's, there's rules, but then there's laws, right? right? So rules, you can break, you can bend, you can kind of, you can change them. Laws are like things that happen in the, the universe that you can't change. And, you know, one of those things is porosity and sensitivity of the hair and that is going to contribute to the durability of your shade. You can, yes. you can totally mix something up and throw it on top of whatever you want. You might get a great result. You might not. Right. But if you, you know, what we're looking at when we're talking about filling is creating the necessary support for whatever your target shade is. You know, it's like you can't, it, if, you know, you think about removing you know, color from the hair, like building a house. You can't, you know, be in the basement and, and get to the roof. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's sort of like, you gotta, you gotta put the foundation down, then you put the walls on, then you put the roof on. Right. You know? Right. So yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I, I think your point is very valid. It's just that if you're a new hairdresser or you're a hairdresser that's trying to learn color, when someone says to you that you don't need to fill hair anymore, that's not really accurate. Here's mm -hmm. what I will say. You don't have to fill hair the way we did back in the day. Right. Here's why I say that, right? Because Max, you were taught the same thing I was. Mm -hmm. You put yellow in first, then you add red, then you add blue. We were filling hair with direct dye colors. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that today. No. Today, like if you have a demi-permanent line, every blended hair color line already has a balance of blue, red, and yellow in it. Period. Mm -hmm. The chemist did that for you. Right. All you have to be concerned with is the tone. Do you want a balanced, a balanced uh, canvas with yellow? Or do you want a balanced canvas with copper? Right. But if you're trying to create regular commercial hair color results today, 
You don't have to fill the way we did years ago, but that doesn't mean you don't have to fill right. or pigmentize. It just means you don't have to pigmentize the way we did then. I, I mean, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just saying it is yeah. easier today, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You still yeah. need to understand the rules of pigmentizing the hair. I mean, I, like one of the, I think the best mantras I ever learned about uh, doing that is if, you know, if the hair was healthy and in good shape, a lot of times you can just refresh with right. whatever you're using. But if the hair was sensitized, then the more appropriate thing to do would be to fill the hair to, to basically, so it, it, it can be anchored yes. into that, that hair. You know, you, normally when we're filling, we're filling hair that's, you know, two or more levels lighter right. and in rough shape. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, it's void of that supportive color. Yeah, yeah. And, and most and of the it, time it's like Swiss cheese. It's had holes right. poked into it. It's seen bleach many, many times. It's been on the golf course many, many times. You know, it's been shampooed. Well, Here's the thing, too. Think about the client that asks for something that doesn't exist at the desired level that you're headed. For example, a client says, I want to be level seven, but I want to be the color of an iris flower. Yeah. They want that, right? Well, mm -hmm. okay. So if they've got dark hair, immediately basic thought process is I have to lighten the hair to a level seven. Right. Well, the warmth that the hair is going to give you at a level seven is going to be somewhere between orange and orange gold, mm -hmm. depending on where your eye is. Yes. Now you're going to put violet on that. Well, if you look at the color wheel, if I put violet on something that has yellow in it, what do you think happens? <laughs> they actually flatten each other out. Right. And so your violet goes away. You say, well, then how would I do that? You would do that by pigmentizing that hair before you colored it violet. Now, Dennis, I'm talking in the third person. Dennis would do it this way. <laughs> he would pre-lighten to that level seven. And then he would flatten that level seven. And he would probably use gray. Because if I use gray, which is the center of the color wheel, I am flattening everything on that level seven hair. So it's going to be the color of a 57 Chevy that's been primered mm -hmm. before you paint it. Then when I put my violet on there, I'll see violet. Right. So, so that's where you use pigmentizing. Many people do that. The young, the young hairdressers today that call it pre-toning, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're filling. Yeah. <laughs> so we named it pre-toning, but you're actually filling. You know, you tone once and then you tone again. That's filling yeah. the hair. So my request, not my demand, is that stop slamming a fundamental piece of knowledge that hairdressers need to be successful. Right. Because I was really bothered by that. I was going, wow, why would you say that? Yeah. And then, um, and then the whole thing about fully pigmented hair color. I was concerned about that because I've been doing hair for over 45 years, Max, and I've never heard the term fully pigmented versus non-fully pigmented. Right. It's I, don't, like, I don't know what that means. I thought all hair color lines were fully pigmented. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. I reached out to some friends of mine and um, they said, well, that's because that's used as a point of difference in a brand of hair color that's sold on the market today. So it's one of their PODs. Right. And I went, okay, well, no wonder I never heard of it because it's a brand marketing story. And that's cool. But, but remember when manufacturers create a brand, the whole purpose is they want you to buy it. And they will do, many cases, whatever is necessary to skew the message, because they're not lying. They're no. skewing the message slightly. Acceptable truth. Acceptable truth, yes. That's, they're going to give you an acceptable truth 
so that it will influence you to buy their product. Mm -hmm. I have no horse in the race. Neither does Max. So for us, it's about, can you do this with color? Because like I told you before, there's a very small difference between a ton of different colors in this marketplace today. So um, I just had to get that out. You know, I, I just, and it's not ancient. Okay, ancient, in order to be ancient, <laughs> it has to be like hundreds of years old. Right. And I promise you <laughs> that we've not been using um, coal tar based dyes for hundreds of years. Right. Okay, so stop it. You know, and, uh, and I want to stand up for the fact that you need to learn to pigmentize the hair. You need to learn the rules for pigmentizing. Yeah. But uh, this is what happens out there in the marketplace. Dude, it's just uh, no wonder people are confused. Yeah. Well, I mean, and again, it's like maybe the procedure that that was done to fill hair right. you know, 30 years ago right. could be looked at as old school because there's a lot of more. Right modern products out there, you know, that can do the same thing. But the fundamental concept that you're doing here is you are, you know, layering or building up color in an overly lightened uh, shaft of hair in order to support what you're going to put on it as your target shade, whether you do it with direct dyes, whether you do it with color conditioners or color shampoos or demi-permanent right. color, it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. you know, you know, but you, you got to do it. There, there's no way around it, right. especially if the hair's chewed up. Right. Well, it's like today, cause there's so much blonding being done, mm-hmm. you know, many times people take a client beyond pale yellow. They take them into what I call Nirvana Blonde. Yeah. And that's where like the hair is almost transparent. Well, you have to understand that. Self-cutting hair. Yeah. Like it just falls out. They have to understand that that pale yellow that they're looking at, that's not a color. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That pale yellow is the color of keratin (laughs) being lightened. And -hmm. the minute that the pale yellow is gone, there means there is no longer any structure left in the hair and so as a result of that whatever you put on it it's going to probably grab the background of that color that you put on it and that right. color will be temporary at the very least at the very right. at the very most it'll be a temporary color so on heads of hair like that you have to put some yellow back in right. in order to support the color you're going to tone yeah absolutely I mean, and again, another fundamental law, porous hair will reject warmth, period. Yes. yes. You yeah. know, if you don't believe me, go, you know, pick some hair up off the floor at the salon and, and bleach it till it's like, you know, almost done. Snot, snot then, hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like, uh, what is it? Brillo when dry, snot when wet, you know, yes. like. And then put, you know, mix up a 5N and put it on top of it, you know, tell, you know, tell me what you get. Right, right. No, you're absolutely right. So hopefully we got that taken care of. And um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh, I saw saw this one thing on Instagram. I got (laughs) Uh, an influencer on Instagram, they were asking them about removing color. And um, the uh, expert said, remember that color extractors do not remove color. They simply shrink the dye molecule. And, And that's what they say that they do. What they actually do is they cleave or break the connection between the coupling agents and the precursors and the modifiers, because everything's connected together. Right. Okay. It's sort of like they have little arms and they're hanging on to each other. Mm-hmm. Like the guys jumping out of the airplane. It's, it's a square, it's a square dance. Yeah. They're like actually hanging on to dancing yeah. and they're creating a larger structure right. altogether. 
And then we break that. Well, when we break that structure, all right, when we break that structure, they aren't holding hands anymore. Well, if they're not holding hands, you can't see the color because in order for the, if they're not connected, that color is not even visible. Right. So, so yes, it shrinks them, but more, more importantly, it breaks those bonds so that, you know, now you can, as you've broken that bond, then you rinse that uh, product out of the hair. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll change that completely. But sometimes you have to do it more than once in, in order to, because they may have more than one application of color. You may have to do it more than once, maybe twice. And I've had a situation um, where I, I had done it multiple times on a client and every time, you know, you're supposed to put developer into the right. hair to, to right. redevelop any residual stuff that didn't make right. it out. And I ended up, I had to just bleach because every time it would, it would look like it, it totally reversed the process. Right. But then when I hit it with developer at the bowl, it came back. And after the third attempt, I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to get it out of there. Right. And I mixed up lightener and did a very careful application and, right. you know, removed it. Uh, but again, we can go back to that fundamental of porosity. You know, it's like if the hair is really porous, sometimes it, or, or damaged or sensitized, whatever you want to call it, sometimes it doesn't let go of stuff too. Sometimes oh, right. it lets go of everything. Or sometimes, especially with direct dyes, sometimes you, you just can't get them out. And the only way to get them out is to cut it out. Right. Well, you know? here's the reason is that I think is that we think that they're trapped in there because we tell the story of a ship in a bottle. Right they're not trapped they're connected the chemical structure of your hair has been changed right see that, they're, that's they're a part of the hair they are part of the hair now so there's a possibility that the hair is not going to give everything up that's why everything doesn't come out of your hair right. in fact virtually hard nothing comes out of your hair it's just that we break it down into smaller pieces because the second question was what will remove it and they said bleach and that's true but here's the difference one, the extractor is like putting a doorstop in the doorway <laughs> and bleach is taking out the whole door jam. Yeah. <laughs> so, and bleach is a decomposing product. So you have to be very careful when you use it, <clears throat> especially on hair that is sensitized or that has poor integrity. So I think that color extractors in some cases work very, very well. In other cases, like Max was saying, they don't. And you have to be able to do an alternative, yeah. you know, having something else that you can work with. So, <clears throat> again, those are things that we just simply, I, I think we should all know how those different right. things work. It's unfortunate that we don't as an industry. And I think that goes to the people who teach yeah. See, whenever, and Max, you've heard me say this, whenever I see someone and they're espousing information that, that I, I personally know scientifically is not accurate, mm -hmm. I don't think about, oh my God, how much they don't know. I think about who taught that person. Right. Because someone had to teach them that. Yeah, they picked it up somewhere, right? They picked it up somewhere. And so, so again, this is my message to you. If you're an educator or a trainer or a facilitator or a guest artist or whatever flowery title you call yourself, if you are delivering information to other salon professionals and giving them information, hopefully giving them knowledge, your knowledge needs to be on point. Yeah. Because... They, wa they watch and they listen to everything you say. And so if you're not on point and they try it, that's why you always hear us say, don't believe anything we say, test it. Okay? Because once you test it, you own it. I so mean, I think too, it's like when we're coloring hair, there's only really a few things you can do. You can take the hair lighter you can stay at the same level so you can match, mm -hmm. you can deepen, 
you know, and, and also in those categories, there's, you can cover a gray, you can change the tone. Anything we're doing correctively is still, you know, gonna usually one of those things too. Hair's too light, we wanna make it deeper. Hair's too dark, we wanna make it lighter. Hair's a funky tone, we wanna change the tone. Right. And, you know, like if I could give anyone one piece of advice that is also looked at as kind of an old school concept, but man. Oh no, when, not old school. When, when I actually started strand testing stuff. Amen. Like it, it's gonna, it saved me so much heartache. You know, it's like one of my really good colleagues always says, you know, like, let's try to avoid regret when we're working behind the chair. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I've worked in salons where it's like, go, go, go. And you're like, oh, I don't have time for a strand test. I'm just going to mix something up and throw it on. Well, almost inevitably, because I didn't really, you know, the hair tells a story, right? Just like that in that photo, it's showing you its history. Right. And when you don't pay attention to that, that story, a lot of times you can end up in deeper doo-doo than you started started oh, out in and yeah. you're running behind and your, your anxiety is high, you're sweating bullets. And it's like, if you do that strand test, you know, if you're going lighter on dark hair, you know, mix up one foil, you know, lightener and 20 That's volume, right. go straight, you know, scalp to ends or whatever you're trying to do. And you'll see if it can, if it comes up or not, you'll see, you know, Sometimes in the middle of the hair, you'll have a, a cloudy band that won't come out, Right. you know? And it's like, but, but I know people that are like, I don't have time for that. I'm gonna mix up like uh, Ethisol or lightener and I'm gonna dump it all over the head. And then you've <laughs> just, you know, no, normally you, you've got like a calico cat, the hair's now trashed because right. like a color remover is still a persulfate, it's bleach. Yes. Any, any way you want to, you know, put it, you know, I like, I, I heard someone once say, you know, well, it's, it's not, it's a dye solvent. I'm like, dude, that's a bleach. That's another word for bleach. <laughs> it's bleach, you know, that's why it burns your nose hairs when you, yeah. you know, you're yeah. over the shampoo bowl, dumping Back. it, dumping it on. So it's like, you know, save, save yourself some heartache. If you have any trepidation or feeling in your gut, do a strand test, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it it's doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. It means you are predicting success. Exactly. You because know, you're finding out what, what you can do. Hair color is, Dennis? Hair color, we can only predict what hair color will most often do and right. not what it always does. And it will throw us a curveball on occasion. There isn't anyone watching this has, that has not had the curveball thrown at them. And in some cases, more than once. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that my mentor said to me when I was working with him. He, a very quiet, very quiet man. And we'd be at the color bar and we'd be mixing color. And he'd say, Dennis, you know the difference between you and I? There's not much. Uh, my colors can go sideways on me, just like your colors can go sideways on you. The difference is I can fix mine. Can you fix yours? You are only as good as your worst mistake that you can a fix. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this today. Uh, this is episode 12 for us, Max. Is it really? Yeah. Spring break edition. Episode 12, uh, we are so grateful for those people that uh, are subscribing to our YouTube channel here, which you can subscribe right here on YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We are also grateful for all those people that have been following us on Instagram. You can follow Max on Instagram at Max M. Hair. You can follow me on Instagram at Real Captain Color. We also invite you to, to come to our website, which is www.gurunation.net and take a look at uh, some of the webinars that you can download and watch and some of the uh, virtual classrooms that we are offering. Uh, one's coming up tomorrow, Formulation Foundation. It's an online virtual classroom. And so I'm very excited about the people that will be attending that program as, as well. Max and I are putting together a couple of other virtual classroom programs that we'll be um, promoting here uh, relatively soon. 
Um, <clears throat> we're also doing our first live rabbit trails on the 21st of March, uh, 10 a.m. And we're doing it in the Hair Tri uh, Guru Hair Tribe Forum. So uh, if you want to join Hair Tribe, please get over there and put in your request to join Hair Tribe. On Facebook, you guys. On Facebook, yes. And we'll get and we'll answer all your questions and then we can get you into tribe and you can join us on the 21st. We're going to be doing a lot of live things on tribe now. Um, we're really going to start picking that forum up and becoming really active with that, as well as <clears throat> Max and I are in Clubhouse. So we're going to probably be doing a couple sessions in Clubhouse uh, now and again. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to figure out how that all how that all works. <laughs> We're and, trying to yeah. master Clubhouse. And for those of you that uh, go to our website and uh, you've had issues clicking on our educational page, here's the thing you have to remember to do. Clear your cache before you put our, our URL in. Clear your cache. That means clean your cookies. And then you put our... That's what my IT guy said to tell everybody. <laughs> Clean it's your just, cookies um, and then don't, go ahead and don't type toss in, your cookies. Yeah, type in our URL and it should get you to our page and everything should function really well. We're not sure what the issue is. In some places, people have no problems. In other places, people do. If you have pro problems getting onto the website, please send us a note. We have another um, we have another URL that we can share with you that will give you easy access to the website. So we're trying to work all those all those challenges out but uh anyway uh it's been a fun morning max it's been great Definitely. chatting with you my friend always my friend and uh i hope you enjoy florida uh when are you flying home tomorrow tomorrow okay well <clears throat> you enjoy the rest of the day Me and too. uh i'm gonna uh i'm gonna enjoy it here in uh, california as well and oh, oh, oh. oh okay so look the chopper's here for me brother so all I got to right. head to the clearing. Max, I'll see you soon. Everybody, thank you all so much. From my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you? I'm out. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Have a great day. See you, you soon. Bye-bye.